everyone, welcome. This is Patricia Roebuck for Citrus Twist Kits. I am using their October Halloween kit to create a mini album. I did a lot of prepping before I started assembling this album, which really made this come together so quickly. It was so fun. So let me show you. This is the little album that I picked up on sale at Michael's. And here are the little items from the kits. I say little wonderful items. So you have your front and your back, crate, lots and lots of crate paper, have some card stock. Here is the add-on kit. I just wanted to show that because I use a teeny tiny bit. I use basically one pattern paper, a wood veneer, and some die cut leaves from the add-on kit. And I use a, um, a die cut from the Life Crafted. But everything else, those puffy stickers and those alphas, everything else I use the Halloween kit. It is awesome. Now, I want to create my base pages and I want to start with the front of this cover. I am inspired by the colors of the crepe paper line in this kit, so I pull out some paint that complements that. I don't really want to take away from that craft color of the chipboard from this album. I kind of like that look. So I'm just going to brush along the edge here with the dry brush. It has no paint, has no water, it's just a dry brush. And run that along the edges of that and let that dry. And then once I start that, I'm going to create the same pattern, but I'm going to not do the edges of the inside chipboard pages. I'm going to just brush my, my paintbrush along either vertically or horizontally, I'll just mix it up. But I'm just gonna create some pattern, some color, some texture to these chipboard pieces. At first I thought I would use the pattern paper as my pages, but I really like the chipboard. I think it's a really nice place to then layer some of the extra little goodies from this kit. So I'm gonna let that dry just a tad bit, although it's still pretty wet. But I want to add this awesome, awesome stamp, the Traveler's this Notebook from stamp set. It's got some really great texture. So I'm going to use my black memento ink and I'm just going to randomly stamp this image along some of those brush strokes to add some texture. So I'm already creating the base of my pages and loving how this is coming out. I am cleaning off that, that, that stamp really, really well because, you know, I mean, you don't want to wait for the paint to dry. You just want to start, keep going. You know, when inspiration hits, you just got to gotta go with it. So I don't want the paint to get on my, my ink pad. So I'm just cleaning that really super well and making sure it's not getting in between the image of my stamp. Now I'm going to do the front and the back. So I'm not going to show that process, but I also did the back. Now... For the cover, I wasn't able to video this, but I just wanted to show you how it came out. Basically, I took the sequence from the Halloween kit and sequence from the add-on kit, and I stitched them together with some of the die cuts from the Halloween kit. And then I adhered some extra sequence to the cover, and then I used the alpha set and the puffy stickers from the Halloween kit to do the year. I planned all of the cut files that are available this month for October, and I went ahead and used pattern paper to, to back those. I actually cut those cut files twice so that I could have them show on both sides. And then as you can see, like the candy corn and the pumpkins, I went ahead and did all that prep work of putting either cardstock or pattern paper to show through. And then I printed all of my photos. I know where everything is going to go. I have all of those. Those die cuts at the top there are from the Halloween kit. I just clustered a bunch of them together, stitched them, added some sequins. Just so fun. And then here's some more of the cut files that are available. I did a combination of the Halloween and the October. Now I'm going to start taking this apart and I'm going to work on each page. And like I said, I have so much of my prep work done already. This is going to make it so easy. Now for that front cover, for the back, I just used a little piece of cardstock to cover that up. And that's all I did to make that craft 
cover to stand out more. This is where prepping really comes in handy and I have all my photos ready. So I'm just gonna start adhering and then adding some of these clusters. Now I just wanna say I prepped and planned and now I'm at a three day crop. So I'm actually doing this at a crop and if you've ever been to a crop, it's very social. So, and so you might see a coffee cup, a napkin. I'm not sure what you'll see. My workspace will definitely be a little bit more cluttered and the lighting won't be as good as it usually is. So anyway, I just wanted to apologize for that up front. Now I'm just gonna add a little stamping here to this first page. It's the Traveler's Notebook stamp set. I think it's my favorite sentiment. It says my favorite color is October. I just love that. Okay, so I'm flipping this over and I'm gonna use the next photo that I have planned. Now, a lot of this album is not officially Halloween. It's activities during October. So that's why I love the, the Halloween kit and just bringing in a little bit of that life craft it kit you'll see in a little bit. But the pattern paper here that I used, the little squares are from the Halloween kit. The pumpkins are the cut files that Natalie created. I wanted to just use the outline of them. Their faces are adorable, but since this isn't officially Halloween, I thought just having those pumpkins peek underneath is awesome. And I stamped pumpkin patch directly onto the photo with the Traveler's Notebook stamp set. And then I used that the little hearts to accent that little photo. And that is from the Life Crafted Kit. Now I'm using, um, like you can see as I flip through, I'm using quite a bit of the Life Crafted Cut Files that Citrus Twist has available this month. And I definitely had to use this one with the, the film strips. Now for these, I did shrink them just a little bit, but my album really is linked what the length of it is about the size of a traveler's notebook. So I really didn't have to resize these cut files too much before I cut them out. I did do front and back. All of them I have prepped except for this one because I was I knew I was gonna add my photos. So I wanna show a little bit of this process. You can see I, I cut both of them together. I just had to make sure that I had the front and the back to sandwich correctly. Now I will tell you, I should have put the photos that are gonna show on the other side first. And the reason for that is because once I adhere all this together, when I flip it over, I can't tuck those photos on the other side. You'll see in a little bit. But this was a little bit of a tedious pro uh, process to do, but it was so well worth it. I had some of the inside frames saved to use as a template which I highly recommend that you save all of them. I wish I had saved the ones that were not the perfect squares. Those are the only ones I did not save. And it really came in handy, especially when I had to insert directly on top the ones that are gonna show on the other side. So as you can see, I'm fiddling with this, but it was so well, well worth it. It's just like backing with pattern paper on any, any cut file. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you the other side. Okay, so that's the front side, and then here's the back side. And you can see it's adhered. I can't get the photo underneath it to trim it. So saving these inside pieces from that cut file really come in handy. I only had these perfect squares because I thought maybe I would use them in the album. But definitely, if you do something like this, save those ones that are not the perfect square. Those are the ones that are really, really needed. But this worked out fine. What I did is I would trim that based on that and then adhere that directly on top. When it came to the ones that were not a perfect square, I just, I just kind of had to pencil it and then take it out and then trim it. And you can see right here, just in a little bit, this one I'm using the perfect square, but I'm gonna fill the bottom one. So I have that little bit hanging that needs to be trimmed. So I'm gonna use my pencil and then trim that and then adhere it. And this process work is working well for me. I know I'm gonna be able to remedy my little oops here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my liquid glue and adhere this edge down so that way it's secure and it doesn't move on me. 
So now I'm just going to show you the finished finished project, but I also want to show this little tip. When you're using those little squares as a template, there is a right and a wrong way. In that top photo, I had the template the wrong way, so my photo was a little shy, and it was a little part was peeking out. So I'm going to use a die cut from the Life Crafted kit to cover up that little gap that I have there. You can really see it here with it closer to the camera. But what I ended up doing is I moved that photo up, had the gap at the bottom, and then I placed the die cut there along the bottom of that photo. And then I added the puffy heart. And then on the front side, I add one more die cut to the front of it from the Life Crafted kit. I did make one fun little shaker pocket using a Life Crafted page protector. And I filled it with the veneers from the add-on and the sequins from the add-on. But the die cuts that I use at the top are from the Life Crafted kit. And then the die cut, the tab die cut from the Life Crafted kit, I stamped Fall Fave from the Traveler's Notebook stamp set. And then I just stapled that into place there at the top of the page protector. And that is really the pattern that I'm creating with this album. I have the chipboard pages as my base, and I'm using the Lifecraft cut files as dividers here and there. I have pumpkin patch stamped on that one photo to bring in the pumpkin patch photos that aren't necessarily Halloween. And then you'll see in a little bit, I will go back to this page and I'll add Boo Fest because this section will be part of Boo Fest. And then the last section will be trick or treating. It'll be Halloween. But I wanted to speed up this photo, this video so that it's not too, too long. And I know your time is valuable. And I just wanted to at least let you see the process of the pages coming together. I basically just am creating lots of clusters with either the papers or the die cuts that I've created or more of the die cuts. And, and just adding those to the pages with the photos. For this, this web here that I did with the Life Crafted cut file, I made sure my photos on either side matched so that you wouldn't see the back side of the photo through the vellum. And that, that fun little idea came from Crystal Becker to sandwich your cut files like that with the vellum. I really love that look. So really, I'm just going to go through and, and finish up the album with, you know, adding puffy stickers, adding the die cuts. It really, really did come together very quickly. This is one page here that's going to have two photos, and I will make it a, a little bit lighter as far as color and embellishments because of the dark web on the other side, but I think it's just a perfect little amount, especially since it is a little bit more photo heavy. I even use that little strip of pattern paper that I found on my desk as a nice grounding and divider between the photos and adding some more of the puffy stickers here. And of course I did add, I just felt like it fit. I used one of the puffy hearts from the Life Crafted kit on that one as well. Now here I'm going back because I realized I did want to emphasize that this was Boo Fest. So I added Boo Fest to the bottom of that double page spread. And now moving on to Halloween and trick or treating. And I love, love this, this Life Crafted cut file with the candy corn scene trick or treat. And again, I did the exact same thing as I did with all of them. I cut it to where they would sandwich together. And I did take the time to add all that cardstock in between, but it was so well worth it, especially to have it ready to go. As I'm laying this, I'm making sure that I can see her face through the cut file. And then I'm just gonna use some of the die cuts. And then the pattern papers are awesome. This one has two by two cards on the back. Another one has tags and three by four cards. So I'm just gonna use that. And it's the same neutral black and white color as that tag. I don't wanna to add too, too much more color since that candy corn divider is pretty bright. And I'm gonna add a cluster of those die cuts. And then this bat was perfect here for the top of that photo right there. So I'm going to get that in place and then I'm just going to keep on moving. I'm so glad that I had everything ready. It was very, very fun to put this together. Now, this cut file is awesome that Natalie created for us at Citrus Twist. But of course, it's too big for my album, but it's just right for masking. So I'm going to mask with some black ink here to add to my already decorated with the paint and stamping 
chipboard page and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then I'm going to use the bats that I cut out I'm going to use this page as a stencil to stencil on those bat images I'm going to just put my photo in place to see how it lines up and then I will start adding my photos I do have a good bit of photos that take up a good bit of space here so I'm really kind of excited though that this little cluster of die cuts that I created fits over this photo. It says Halloween at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, there's a banner cut or die cut in the Halloween kit that says Happy Halloween. I'm going to trim it to just have happy off to the left at the top there. So it'll say Happy Halloween. And then I'm going to layer a tag and some pattern paper under those photos on the left that coordinates with the banner die cut with the jack-o-lantern there. So it really complements and balances that page. Adding some of those puffy stickers. Now I did not keep all the video in here of me going back. I will go back through this album and add a few little things that I think are needed like some more chipboard or puffy stickers or something like that. But really not too, too much. I'm just going, I just like to go back through and see if there's anything else that I would need to add. And I will do that. You can see that in the photos versus the video of some things that I've added. Even stamping. Sometimes I'll add a little bit more stamping. And you can see when I do this next page, this last photo, I love this little cluster of, of die cuts that I, I created from the kit. To, it's perfect to adhere to the bottom of this photo with that cut file. But on the back side of the inside cover of that back, um, back cover, I just added a little simple stamping and one of the hearts from the Life Crafted Kit to finish this. Last little tidbit is I brought my, my star punch to add some stars to the vellum, which I thought was a nice little effect. And that really finishes this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have fun with your Halloween kit. I'll put all of the photos of the album on my blog so that way you can see all of the pages. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy.